Part two, episode three. Welcome back. May 25th, 2020. Zoe and I went to the cemetery this afternoon. It's flooded, of course. There were people here. There were four different headstones that had flowers on them. And I didn't come to the cemetery yesterday, but now I wish I would have. But as I have been going through this these past five years, I know when things are meant to happen, they will happen. But the headstones that had flowers on, the, on them are some that I would have liked to talk to. It didn't happen and yesterday was not the day. I took pictures and told my angels we loved them and we left the cemetery. 12.04 p.m. Patty called telling me she posted some comments on the cemetery cover-up Facebook page. She said, you need to get people to share all the posts to get more actual readings of it. She said, tell Jen. I said, I will pass the message on and thank you. When I arrived home, I sent Jen the message. 12.33 p.m. I also wrote, running for state representative. B is the name. Jen wrote, all right, I will look him up. 2.45 p.m. I sent Jen four pictures of today. It's flooded. Jen wrote, wow, I thought they fixed the issue. I wrote, mm, I don't know. May 27, 2020. Such an emotional day today. Can we get this over already? 12.22 p.m., Jen called. I answered and she said, I have news. I said, is it good news? She said, I have gotten emails from some and them saying they can't help because they're not in that field. I said, I understand that because that's what would happen to me. She said, the one that called didn't email, they called. It is from beep and beep and I believe they are in beep. I said, yes, big time name here. She said, all right, I was driving and they wanted to ask questions, so I asked if they could call me back. They said they would call me back at the same time tomorrow. Jen agreed. I said, oh my gosh. I said, I hope they will help and not be like the others. She said, we will find out tomorrow. I said, I was thinking that maybe you need to send it to the governors, senators, and congressmen surrounding states around. Beep. Jen said, yes, we can do that. 2.06 p.m., Jen called, and I missed her call. 3.39 p.m., I called her back. She said, I'm looking up the ratings for the law firm that called me earlier. They have about a 50-50 rating. She said, it looks like comments are being made. Some they are a good firm. Then others say they don't call anyone back. I said, oh, wow. I said, I guess we will wait until tomorrow and see if they call you back. Hopefully they will. Hopefully they will be the ones to help us. She said, yes, that's all we can do right now is wait for this one to call back. And I will send the case to some more. I said, yes. The phone hung up. At 4.04 p.m., I called her back to finish talking about what to do next. We talked for a couple more hours, and then we hung up. Jennifer, I want to spend, send a special thank you for all that you do. And for today, just talking to me on the phone so it didn't seem as though I was by myself. Thank you for that, baby. You just don't know how much that helps me. When I'm by myself, that's when it seems to be the toughest for me because I start thinking and then it gets me going. But today I was cleaning out a closet and I found Megan's diaper bag. Winnie the Pooh diaper bag. It has all of Megan's stuff in it, still to this day. So yeah, it did upset me and I started crying and I cried most of the day. My eyes were so heavy from crying so much. So yeah, Jen was a big help today. I hope tomorrow will be better. May 28, 2020. I woke up this morning feeling so much better. I'm trying to stay positive and optimistic about all of it, all of this. 
I waited to hear from Jen today after she talked to the law firm. 12.23 p.m., Jen wrote, I'm on hold with beep and beep. They are looking over what I sent them. I wrote, oh my gosh, please, please, please help us. I said, all right, baby, let me know. Jen wrote, how much money have you spent on your last lawyer and all the other stuff you paid out during all of this? 12.51 p.m., when Jen was done talking to the law firm, she called. We talked about what the law firm said. I said, send it to them. She said, I will, and I will send a few more to others. After we were done talking, I sent her a message of the name of the attorney I had and who he's associated with. Jen wrote, I just sent emails to three people at the Bar Association that I could find, and one of them is a high up person. So keep your fingers crossed. I wrote, yes, my fingers, my toes, even the veins in my heart are crossed. Thank you so much, baby. Jen wrote, you are welcome, and if they come back saying they can't help, I will continue to send it to more. I wrote, all right, yes, send it to anyone and everyone you think of. Later this afternoon, Zoe and I went to the cemetery to check on things, to visit with Megan and Wyatt. There's still water laying on the ground, and it makes me sick. You fixed the drain systems in a hurry, but did you? All you had to do was fix the situation, and we could have all moved on by now. May 30th, 2020, 8.45 p.m., just before dark, we made our way to the cemetery. It still had water laying on the ground in some areas, but nothing to be surprised about. I took a couple pictures. June 1st, 2020, 1.02 p.m., I received a message from Jen. She wrote, Hi, Aunt M. Just wanted to say I love you, and I went to visit Grandma and Grandpa today. She sent two pictures, one of each of their headstones. I wrote, Oh, thank you, baby. Thank you so much. Jen wrote, I miss them so much. I said, I do too, baby. I wrote, Did you receive the maps? Jen wrote, not yet. I wrote, all right, it should be today. I thought you would have already gotten them. Jen wrote, I will let you know as soon as I do. I felt a sense of peace after I talked with Jen today. I thank you, Jen, for everything you are doing and have done. Please believe me. June 2nd, 2020. My Madison Rose really knows how to make my day. She went to the store for a few things and brought me a bouquet of flowers. She's so loving and caring. Thank you, Madison and Zoe. I'm laying in my lounge chair and I'm quietly asking God, Wyatt, and Megan to give me a sign. I saw a red bird, but before I glanced and then looked back, it had flown away. At 1.50 p.m., I looked up at the sky and I saw a cloud in the shape of a turtle. My first thought was to take a picture, so I did. As I'm thinking Wyatt and fumbling with my phone to relook at the picture, I looked back up and the cloud was gone. Just like that, gone. I relooked at the picture and it is a beautiful picture of a turtle made of clouds. I said, I have only seen a turtle in the clouds once before. The first day was the day we buried Wyatt. And the other day is today. I messaged Jen. 3.20 p.m. Hi, baby. I was asking Megan and Wyatt for a sign this morning, asking to show me that we are doing the right thing at the cemetery. This afternoon, I'm laying out by the pool, and I looked up and saw this in the clouds. I took a picture of it, and when I was done re-looking at the picture on my phone, I looked back up, and it was intermingling with the other clouds. It was gone. Wyatt is Indian, and his tribe is Ottawa Turtle Creek. I have only seen a turtle in the clouds twice, the day we buried him and today. I sent her the picture. What do you see? Jen wrote, 
I see a turtle. Oh my gosh. I wrote, yes, that's what I said too when I saw it. And of course, I told him I love him. I know we are doing the right thing and we are just going to have to find that right person. Jen wrote, and we will. I know we will. I wrote, yes, yes, we will. 5.03 p.m. after Madison got off work, we went to the cemetery. I took four pictures. We told our babies we loved them and we left to go home. June 3rd, 2020, Jen sent a message. 10.41 a.m. I got the maps today. I wrote, oh, okay, good. I was beginning to wonder. Jen wrote, the cemetery has some explaining to do, and if I was there, I would be asking it right now. I wrote, oh my gosh, what? Jen wrote, can I call you in a few minutes? I wrote, yes, give me about 12.30 my time. Jen wrote, all right, you call me when you are free. I wrote, all right, in about 30 to 45 minutes. Jen wrote, all right. At 12.45 p.m., I called Jen. We talked for one hour and about 48 minutes. We talked about the maps and what she saw and told me some differences between the two maps. One map was from 1999, the time we buried Megan, and the other map is from January 16, 2019 the admission map. I told Jen, she said they have headstones marked in the 2019 map that don't match up to the map of 1999. I said, I know. They just went out there and moved everything to the south and acted like they cut a tree down and the existing tree is the north tree. But the north tree was cracked in half and cut out between May 2010 in October 2011. And the existing tree is the South Tree, Megan's tree, as I call it. Megan and Sheridan, beep, rock headstones tree. They have always laid under that tree. Marjorie, beep, always laid in front of the tree. Well, you know that. Jen said, yeah, I know. But on the two different maps, they have Marjorie be at two different trees in two different years. I said, be, be, should be laying by the tree they cut down after the storm. And Marjorie be laid by the south tree. Jen said, and they have Megan laying under the south tree in 1999. And in 2019, they have her in two different spots. I said, oh, really? I said, they didn't know what the hell they were doing when they printed up the mat in 2019. And it seems to me like they keep doing it to themselves yet again. Oh, I was so mad. Jen said, yes, that's how it looks. I said, I don't know how to read one, so I don't know but I do know it didn't look right. Jen said, I don't know how to read it either, but I do know by looking at it, something doesn't look right. I do know someone that knows how to read it, so I will let her take a look at it and see what she says. I said, all right, good baby. Are, you are doing such a good job on this, and everyone that knows you and I tells me I picked the right one to work on this with me. And people that don't know you say the same thing. So I know you are the one to help me. And you may have to come here and I may have to come up there. But you are the one to speak up to these people. She said, and I will. After talking with Jen, she got another call. When she clicked over, it disconnected us. So when she was done, she called me back. We talked for about another 20 minutes and we let each other go. Jen said, I will start resending the case to different people. I already sent it to, and I will keep sending. I wrote, thank you again, Jen. June 4, 2020. I thank God every morning. This morning when I woke up, I read a scripture, and I know I needed to keep the faith, and I know that God has this. And it read, 
doubting myself when something I believe Jesus has called me to do is the same thing as doubting him. He called me. He's in me. He's the one doing the work. All I have to do is keep my eyes on him. That's it. Don't worry how I sound, what others are thinking, whether I'll fail. I have to just keep putting one foot in front of the other, trusting Jesus. Thank you for this. I messaged Jen with a copy of the scripture. Thank you, dear God. 7.09 p.m. I wrote, read this. We got to quit doubting ourselves, myself. God has this. We just got to put one foot in front of the other and keep working on it. 9.44 p.m. Jen wrote, wow. I thought the same thing. June 5th, 2020. Happy Friday to all. June 6, 2020. When I woke up this morning, I felt a little unsettled with how it feels as though everything is at a standstill. It seems as if nothing's moving forward. I know with the virus, it has slowed down a lot of things, way down. But when I woke up and thanked God for this day, I asked him to watch over me, us, and to help us to get through the illness that has come upon us. I asked him to send someone to help with the cemetery. I thanked him and said, Amen. Madison and Zoe, Megan's younger sisters, went to the cemetery on their way home from the community pool near the cemetery. Madison took some pictures. Thank you that, for that, baby girls. I thanked them because this was the day I did not need to be driving. June 7, 2020, I woke up hoping someone, something would be better. Someone, anyone would help to do something. June 9, 2020, I messaged Jen at 2.07 p.m. I wrote, hi baby, checking in with you. Any progress, anything? Jen wrote, hi Aunt M. I have sent more emails out and I'm going to type up something with pictures of the map and post on Facebook because even Mike thinks what I said was right about the cemetery and the maps. But the other day I had a bit of a problem so I've been trying to recover from that. I wrote, baby I'm just checking on you and everything. Thank you for all you were doing and I appreciate it all. If it's getting too much for you though, you will be all right know that. I know it's tough and you have helped me with doing so much. Now, are you all right? Jen wrote, I'm still helping you. I have been looking up other attorneys that I haven't messaged and sending emails because I know someone out there, someone can help us. Yes, I'm all right. The pressures of life with COVID is getting to me. Jen wrote, I just made a post on the page with the maps. I wrote, all right, baby, as long as you're all right, we're good. I hope something works. Jen wrote, it will. In my daily word today, I have to believe this. He, Lord, before whom I walk, will send his angels with you and make your way successful. Thank you for that. As I end my day. June 10, 2020. Jen posted the two maps yesterday and I took a look at it this morning. She added the two different pictures of the maps. One, one map from 1999 when we buried Megan. Two, the other map is from the admission we received January 16, 2019. Jen wrote in her post, for the last week I have been looking at the maps of the cemetery where Megan's buried. I can see a few issues when comparing these maps to each other. I'm posting them to see if anyone else can spot the same issues or spot other things that I did not see. If you need help understanding the maps, just message me and I can explain them. 
After I looked at what Jen posted, I wrote at 11.46 a.m. The map on the left is the map from when we buried Megan in 1999. The map on the right is the admission map of when they admitted headstones had been moved on January 16, 2019. Please give us an opinion. Then I had a thought. Gosh, one person. That's all we need. June 11, 2020. When I woke up this morning, I felt a bit emotional. I felt sick in the pit of my stomach. I felt as though it would never be over. I got out of bed and after I used the restroom, I checked my sugar. It's 1.15 again. Thank you, my pops. My phone rang as I finished and it was Patty. She said, I'm trying to read those maps and I don't know much about them, but I can even tell there's something that's not right. I said, I know. She said, you need to write letters to the Congress, not the ones running, but ones that's already in office. I said, all right. I said, Jen and I are working on that now. 10.15 a.m., I messaged Jen. I wrote, Hi, baby. I had talked to someone and they asked me about the maps and she said to start sending this to Congress. What do you think? She wrote, we should. I think that you or I need to type up a good email explaining it all and also add the links and photos of everything and send it to Congress, TV shows, and anyone else we can think of. I wrote, yes. All right. Do you want me to write it? It's a great idea. Jen wrote, I will write it up tonight. I wrote, all right, you can use the timeline of your post to get most of the information, but I was told the maps does not look right to her. Then you can add some pictures of important pieces. So we will do that. Well, mostly you, we gotta try everything though. I wrote, I was having an emotional morning until I checked my sugar and it was 115, my pops. He's with us and we know they are pulling for us. I love you, baby. Whatever you write, make sure it's edited in sentences and correctly spelled. And if you are traveling, will you be going to? Please talk to Mike about if someone takes interest, we may have to go to them with you doing the talking because of my emotions, but we can do it together. And they may come to us but to do this, we have to be prepared when and if. Take a deep breath. We have gotten this far, and I was told that information this morning, see in 115 again too, so I know there are still signs coming from above. We can do this. Jen wrote, after I wrote it, I will send it to you to read before sending it to anyone. I wrote, all right, baby, take your time, and I love you so much praying for you, praying for us, all of us. 12.20 p.m., I have to stay positive. A little after six this evening, Zoe and I went to the cemetery. It's pretty out here right now because of all the flowers that are out for Memorial Day weekend. Megan's flowers are still under the tree where she was laid to rest. I can't help to wonder why they leave them there now. Well, I think I know. That's not for sure. It's easier on me though, that they leave them alone now. As I have said before, they removed them fat faster than we could put them out there before. But since we dug Megan's headstone up, they have left them alone. And I'm thankful for that. I took some pictures. I told my angels we loved them and I asked each of them to help us, to find someone that will help. I told each of them to give each other a hug, and we left the cemetery. June 12, 2020. I was talking to my brother John earlier to wish him a happy birthday. He asked, how are things going with the cemetery? I said, things are good. Jen's doing a good job and working right along with it all. She's writing letters now to send to Congress and te television stations. I said, it has taken some time, but it seems as if a lot has been put on hold. It's all on hold with the virus. I have to believe that God put it on hold for us to slow me down, 
to give me a break so that when it's time to show this story, I will be able to tell it loud and clear. He said, wow, that's a good way of looking at it. That's real good, sis. I said, thank you, but I have to think that way because I believe someone will help us. We just have to find him or her. He said, yes, you will. You will find them. I said, yes, we will. And happy birthday, Brother John. June 13, 2020. Good morning, everyone. Gosh, please let something be about to happen to get this over with. I know Jen's been doing an awesome job, just as I did until I couldn't do any more. I have been on a break for a little while, away from it all, but not totally away as to not do anything. I needed the break and Jen has allowed me to do that. I'm ready to get back on it. I'm debating now, should Jen come here? Should I go to Florida? Should I go to Jen? What? What to do? Should I continue to let Jen work a little longer? Give me a sign. Help me to know we are about to get help. A sign to let this be coming to an end by someone wanting to help. I need a sign. I need Jen to call to say she has someone that's gonna help us. Give me that sign. My day, my day moved on and I'm always trying to stay positive. Today I first saw 333, then an hour later I saw 444. I took them as signs from above to let us know we are all right. I know God and our angels are watch, watching over us. Thank you. 9.35 p.m. Jen message. She wrote, Hi Aunt M, I have a question for you. I'm continuing to work on the email to send to Congress and a TV show host. I wanted to know when the cemetery flooded, was it all of the cemetery or just Megan's area? I wrote, Megan's area the most and the worst, but in different areas of the cemetery, there would be water puddles, but nowhere near the pond it would leave in Megan's area. Jen wrote, all right, and I found something to get anyone in the right mind to question the city's map of the cemetery. Are you busy? I wrote, I had just asked God this morning. I said, please give me a sign, something to help Jen get someone to help us. No, I'm not busy. You can call if you want. 9.41 p.m., Jen called. We talked for about two hours and a half. We talked about what she has found and what she has done with the email letter. She read the email letter to me and I listened. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Thank you so much, baby, so much. I reassured her of how well she was doing and that I appreciate everything she was doing. She said, I know and I don't mind doing this. It's helping me also. I said, take your time, baby, we will get this. We just have to be positive and keep moving forward. She said, I know we will and we will do this. I said, thank you so much. June 14, 2020, 5.52 p.m. Zoe and I went to the cemetery. Megan's flowers are still there. They're stuck in the ground still, even though all the water that laid out there could easily just carry them away. But for some reason, they are still stuck in that ground where we had put them in February. There is grass growing up around them but when the city mows grass, they do not remove the flowers anymore like they would before. Not even to mow the grass or not to at least consider weed whipping around the flowers. They don't even do that. June 15, 2020. Madison, Zoe, and one of Madison's friends and I went to beep, beep, just needed to get away. I feel at times as though I'm suffocating. We also went to beep, beep, near, beep, beep. We ate dinner and I drove to the top of beep, beep, one of our favorite places to go just to get away. It was a beautiful sunset. I drove home and we made it safely. To all a good night. June 16, 2020. 
I haven't heard anything more from Jen, but I'm hoping she's continuing to do what needs to be done. I pray we can find someone, anyone that will help us. 6.21 p.m. I messaged Jen because while I was scrolling through the cemetery cover-up Facebook page, I saw an ad for the man running for state representative. A while back, I had sent Jen the information on this man. I don't know if she had already sent him the information or not, but if not, this might be the best time to do that. I haven't heard anything back from her yet, but I will. June 17, 2020. Zoe and I went to the cemetery earlier this afternoon. The flowers are still there where we placed them. I'm happy to see that too. Every time we are there and they're still there, I'm happy to see that. When we arrived home, I needed to lay down. I laid there for about 20, 30 minutes, and when I got up, I saw a candle setting on the table, and I thought, I need to light that and say a prayer. So as I'm lighting it, I was saying a prayer, and I heard my phone ding as if I had a message. When I finished, I checked my phone, and it was a message from Jen. 2.10 p.m. Hi, Aunt M. This is what I have been sending to Congress and the TV shows. I didn't put the whole story in the email because we want them to look at the links. So tell me what you think or if I should add more. She wrote, to whom it may concern. I'm writing this email to get help with the injustice that has occurred. We need your help to get it corrected. Please read this story and look at the links provided and tell us how to get help. In April 1999, our family had laid to rest a beautiful little angel at Beep Cemetery in Beep Beep. If that day was not hard enough, we had had more days worse than that in the past few years. We visit the cemetery a few times a week. In 2015, there was a flood in the area of the cemetery where our loved one and many other people's loved ones are buried. After the flood waters went down, the headstones had been moved from their original spots. After a few meetings with the city about the headstones and being lied to, we decided to file a petition to have our loved one's remains removed from the cemetery. When the day came to remove our little angel, we strongly feel that they dug up, not our baby. Our full story is in the Cemetery Cover-Up Facebook group link that is attached to this email. In the Facebook group, we have pictures to prove our case, but we need your help to get justice for everyone involved. Please, please take a look at our story and please help us. I wrote, it's so weird at the time you sent this. I just lit a candle and asked God to send someone to help Jen, to help us get this fixed and done. I heard my phone ding and as I had a message and this was on there. Wow. All right, let me read it and I will let you know. Have you heard back from the Bar Association? Jen wrote, I have been trying to figure it out. I haven't heard anything back from them. I'm thinking about sending them another email. I wrote, you did good. All right, yeah, keep sending, send, send, send. Thank you so much. And at times I feel like I can't breathe. And I thought yesterday, God, what would I have done without Jen? I'm exhausted and now she's doing the work. And please help her to be strong and help her to get through this. I'm sorry. And of course I said, amen. And thank you, thank you again and again and again. And Jen, your email comment is excellent. You did a good job. Jen wrote, figure out if that was enough or if I should add more. But I talked to Mike and he said not to add all of it. Make them want to look at the links. I wrote, not too bad, little lady, you did great. And yes, I agree with Mike. Jen wrote, all right, I'm resending it to you now that I added and changed some things. Let me know if it sounds better. After I read the edited story, it sounded great. 
I wrote, yes, it's very good, baby. Jen wrote, all right, I will get the email addresses to Congress that I can find in any TV shows, and I will start sending them out. I wrote, send it to everyone, senators all over, representatives all over, governors all over, TV shows all over, famous people all over, Congress, and even the president. Everyone, yes, you go, girl. Jen wrote, I will. I wrote, send and resend and resend. Please do not put the email on Facebook, though, baby. She wrote, I won't. I sent a heart symbol. To me, it was just so weird when I woke up this morning praying to God that someone helps us, helps Jen. My heart was heavy today. We went to the cemetery and I prayed to God and my angels. When I returned home, I lit a candle to say a prayer. And as I'm lighting the candle and praying, my phone dings, and it's the messages from Jen. And I'm so grateful. I'm taking this as another sign. 7.49 p.m. Give us the strength to get this done. 7.56 p.m. I messaged Jen. I wrote, if you don't have these two names, beep, beep, and beep, beep, they are running for Congress. Jen wrote, I have them. June 18, 2020. 2.50 p.m. I messaged Jen. I wrote, are you doing all right today? You probably have sent a lot by now, but just keep sending little by little. Fingers are crossed. Jen wrote, I have sent a few. I'm writing down the emails I could find and going to send more emails out. I wrote, yes, and every few days to a week, resend them. We have to be in their faces, but on the web. June 19, 2020, such an emotional day. For an example, I watched a cardinal bird splashing around in a puddle of water on my patio. I took a video of it and a couple pictures. I have seen the numbers 111 and 222 also. Later in the day, I saw 555. Madison then sends me this quote. You're going to go through tough times. That's life. But I say nothing happens to you. It happens for you. See the positives in negative events. Written by Joel Osteen. And then another one that said, choose consciously and wisely. You're only one choice away from changing your world. And I appreciate all of the encouragement. 12.33 p.m. Madison has been gone to work for about 15 minutes. A thought came to mind that I need to lay down. I laid on the couch and started to cry. I asked, why? The all-time question. All of a sudden, I felt a warmth come over me from the inside out. I hear a vague man's voice say, rest, my child. I laid there with my eyes closed and embraced the feeling. I then got up after a short time and felt all right. As my evening moved on, I could feel my body carrying the stress of the day. I had been crying off and on, and I don't think I've had a day of not crying in a very long time. But as I'm walking through my dining room, I heard a little voice say, Nana, don't stress. You got this. God's got this. I knew it was Megan's voice. And I didn't cry anymore that day. My heart felt heavy, though. I can't ignore the signs, and I won't. Thank you yet again. June 20, 2020. When I woke up this morning, I prayed to Jesus to ask his father for Father's Day to guide us, to give us strength, to watch over us, and to help someone go to Jen to help us. I thanked him and said, in Jesus' name, amen. I got out of bed. I'm having a pretty good day, and I only cried once. 
When I saw the numbers 333, I got so darn emotional. Later this afternoon, a few of my grandchildren came to visit. That's when I knew I would be all right. I'm good as long as I'm not alone. But the times I spend by myself, I cry. And I don't like the feelings I get thinking about everything. But I did have a good day and night today. 11.14 a.m., Jen sent me a message. She wrote, Hey, Aunt M, I thought you would like to know that one of the ladies from the news stories about the cemetery finally added herself to the cemetery page. I wrote, Really? I said, That's some great news. Maybe more of them will follow her. Jen wrote, Yes, I'm hoping the same. I sent, Prayers, hands, and fingers crossed. I sent a heart and a face with the heart symbol on it. Later this evening, two of my grandchildren went with me to the cemetery. Megan's flowers are still there. Grass has not been mowed or trimmed in that area. There's now grass growing in some of the area of the dirt spot. But I always put her flowers under that south tree. Always. Happy Father's Day, Dad, Pops, and all the wonderful fathers. Bless us all. June 24, 2020. I haven't heard anything from Jen in a couple days. I messaged her at 12.52 p.m. I wrote an email for her. That's an email addressed to a man that called when I sent letters out. His name is Beep, Beep. Will you send him the email link? Thank you, baby, and I love you a lot. Hope all is good for you. Jen wrote, I will send it as soon as I can when I get home. I wrote, all right, baby. When I send things, it's not that you have to do it right then. It's just so you have it. 5.03 p.m., Madison, my great-grandson, and I went to the cemetery. There's been water on the ground from two days ago when it rained. Still so much for fixing the drains. They removed the flowers from Memorial Day weekend and are mowing the grass. Her flowers are still there, but tomorrow they will most likely move them too and mow. Then we will put some more flowers down for Megan and Wyatt. I felt a bit overwhelmed and I'm hoping this can be over soon. I need it over, but fixed and everyone can rest that it has been fixed. Please just fix it. June 25th, 2020. Wow, what a night. I was woken up by confusion of why I felt like this. I asked God to forgive me of my sins. I said, Dear Heavenly Father, and I fell back asleep. When I woke up this morning, I was emotional. I'm crying as I'm waking up and asking for help. Please send someone. Someone? will want to help. Everyone have a good day. 11.35 a.m. I get so emotional and then I pray to God and my angels. Seems at time as they hear me and I get a sign that an angel is nearby. I'm sitting in my chair in the living room and as I look up and out the window, I see a cardinal sitting on the branch of the tree and then it flew away. I thought to myself, thank you, dear God, and my angels. My tears quit flowing, and I knew they were with me. I need to remember that more. They were always with me, with us. I have to keep believing everything will work out, and it will, and I will. June 26, 2020. This morning, I messaged Jen, 9.42 a.m., I wrote, Senator, beep, beep. That's another name to send an email to if you haven't had his name yet. Have you sent any out yet or are you still working on the list of names? As I see names, I send them to you, but if you have them already, cross it off. But yeah, send them and keep sending them over and over again. Jen wrote, I don't think I have that one. I will send it to him. I wrote, all right, good. 
I'm spending some time with my babies. He likes being outside playing and swimming. I sat outside with him, and while I did, I laid in the sun. He likes to splash me to get me wet. He thinks it's funny. While laying in the sun, I'm thinking about calling Jen to see how far she has gotten with sending the emails out with the link on the Facebook page. In the phone rang. 2.43, it's Jen. We talked for about two hours. She was telling me about what she had been doing and what she's got done and, and things going on with her family. Everyone seems to be having so many issues with them themselves, and it's so sad. When we got close to finish talking, I asked her, have you sent out more emails? Jen said, I have sent some, but I didn't do it by quantity because I didn't want to send too many at one time and take the risk of someone not receiving theirs or the computer jamming by sending too many at one time. I said, all right, that's why I was calling to talk to you when you called me to let you know. Trying to send them all at one time may mess something up and may some may not get theirs. She said, that's what I thought too and I need to make sure they all get it when I send it. I said, that is why I send you names here or there, so you send them as you get them. Jen said, I have a list, and when I send one, I put a check mark by the name, and I know who I have sent to and where I have left off. I said, that's a great idea. She said, oh, I know if this does not work, maybe I need to come down there so we can make signs and pick it in front of the cemetery. I said, yes, that's what we need to do, and we can call the news and get the publicity. I know we can do it. Jen said, oh, I know we can, and we will. I said, but I feel someone will help us. She said, I feel it too. We just have to find that person. I said, we will. Lake Madison said, we have to be patient. Jen said, yes, we will be patient, like Madison said, laughing. I said, yes, we can do this. Just send, send, send. Jen said, I will. I said, all right, good. I love you and thank you for everything. After a little while, we talked and we said our goodbyes. I'm really hoping someone takes an interest in this to help us. 6.44 p.m., Patty called. We talked for about five minutes and she had gotten another call, so she called me back at 6.51 p.m. We talked about what Jen had been doing and told her what she was doing now. Patty then suggested she can design the signs to pick it with. She can help that way until she is able to come here to help. I thought that was really nice of her to offer and I hope it works out for all of us. While I was on the phone talking to Patty, we drove through the cemetery. They finished mowing and it looked like, but not weed whipping around all the headstones but they did not remove Megan's flowers that were still under the tree where she was laid to rest in 1999. The flowers have been there since February, of course, 2020. We will go out tomorrow or Sunday to put new flowers down, stick them in the ground. We had talked about getting some new ones, but we were waiting for them to remove the ones that have been there since Memorial Day weekend. It's now July. So it's time for some red, white, and blue for both Megan and Wyatt. My heart aches for all the people. Patty and I talked a little longer and then we let each other go. I took pictures. June 27, 2020. Good morning on this windy but beautiful day. I went outside to clean around the pool and put the vacuum in. When I first stepped out onto the patio, I saw a black feather. Then I walked around to the one end of the pool and I saw a white feather. I picked the white one up, then I picked the black one up and set them on the table until I went inside. As I'm cleaning up and sweeping the cement around the pool, I started seeing several white feathers and some gray feathers laying in the grass in different areas. I got my phone and took pictures of them. When I came into the house, I wanted to look up to see what the feathers meant. I did. I found one black feather, three gray feathers, and 11 white feathers. I read what each color feather meant, and I just have to say that, I know God and my angels are watching over me, and he answered my question.
Thank you, dear God. And of course, while I was reading what each one meant, I started to cry. But they were happy tears. I told Madison today or tomorrow we need to go to the cemetery and put flowers under the tree for Megan and some for Wyatt. She said, all right, we will. 5.32 p.m. Today has been kind of an odd day. Finding the feathers this morning and then when I was outside, I found another white one in the front yard. I can only think that God wants me to know that he's watching over us. And I thank him for that. 5.55 p.m. As I walked through my sliding glass window onto the patio, I found another feather. The feathers have been all around me today. I have to stay positive and believe in what the feathers mean. Again at 8.46 p.m., I'm sitting on my patio cleaning and turning off the skimmer. I started netting the pool for a little bit because of the wind blowing a bit. And as I'm skimming, I saw feathers in the pool. There were 13 white feathers, two gray feathers, and then I found five white feathers on the patio. And yes, I know I'm outside and there are birds flying around, but for some reason today, I have noticed so many more than usual. It just seemed odd to me. I'm so very grateful for the signs from above. Thank you for this day. June 28, 2020. This morning has been peaceful, and as I walked out the sliding glass to net and clean the pool for the day, I didn't notice as many feathers as I did yesterday. And I did look to make sure what I was believing as signs from above were what I believed. Thank you. Although I would have loved to have woke up every morning and find my yard full of feathers, just as many as it looked yesterday but I didn't get that this morning. So I'm going to continue believing that it was the sign. 7.35 p.m. later this evening, Madison and I went to the cemetery to put red, white, and blue flowers on our baby's headstone. There were a few people out here and it's good to see. We went to see Wyatt first. I talked to him and Madison arranged the flowers in his face. We took pictures. I took his springtime flowers off and put them on another young lady's headstone. Rest in peace, Danielle. Beep! When we were done visiting Wyatt, we went to Megan's. Madison put Megan's flowers in the ground behind the tree and I took pictures. I took a few other pictures of the headstone that still had flowers on them. The city didn't remove all the flowers from the cemetery yet, but they did remove the front half of the cemetery the north area. We even thought, and I said to Madison, if they remove Wyatt's flowers, we will have to put new ones on again. Madison said, that's what I'm thinking. I said, it'll be okay. We will come back out tomorrow to see if they remove the back half of the cemetery. I said, they may even remove Megan's, but I'm hoping they leave them alone. Madison looked at me and shook her head. We visited with Megan and we left the cemetery. June 29, 2020. Well, I checked again this morning for feathers in my yard. There were two. A little white one and a bigger white one with a little gray tip. The more I looked, I did notice, I didn't notice any more. Throughout the day, I knew this had to be the sign from above and I'm so grateful that I can receive them. Madison and I did go to the cemetery to make sure why Megan's flowers were still there. And they were. And I was quite happy about that. I'm hoping they leave them alone. Well, I know they will leave Wyatt's alone until they remove them for the season. But Megan's are the ones I keep an eye on. The past two times we have put flowers under the tree, they have left them alone. And I'm hoping they will leave those alone too. I told my angels we loved them and we left the cemetery. They really are true angels. July, July 2nd, 2020, 1214 PM, I messaged Jen. I wrote, hi baby, hope all is good for all of you. I wanted to let you know to resend to the Bar Association if you haven't already. I have some more names for you as soon as I get home, I will send them to you. 
You may already have some, or some of them you may not have, but you can send to the ones you don't have. Jen wrote, I will be sending out more emails this weekend. I'm working on a list of more people. After I was done doing some things that needed to be done and arrived home, I messaged Jen back. 4.27 p.m. I wrote, all right, baby, and thank you. I'm home, and as soon as I can, I will send you the names I have. Then you can see what ones you already have. Have a good evening. I haven't heard anything back from Jen yet. She may be busy. She will get back to me, though. I looked at some pictures that Madison sent me that she took of the candidates running for office. We have to try anything and everything. I love you, Megan, and then it's not going to stop until someone acknowledges what is going on. I love you too, Wyatt. Thank you for listening, and I would like to share with you that I am telling my story, and as I tell my story, I am seeking help. If you know anyone could give us pointers, advice, tips, the, the help please help us. Stay tuned for next episode. Stay kind with your words. Thank you.